Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Saka Fet, Saka Bregle. So today's video is going to be another military video. I get questions almost, I want to say 15 times a day by 15 different people every day. So first thing I do want to say is I'm not a recruiter. Um, I've been in, who is staring at me? I've been in the army for going on three years. I'm currently stationed at Fort Campbell, Kentucky for people who don't know and I am in an aviation unit. So a lot of you guys hit me up asking me the same questions over and over, so I thought I would do this video to hopefully, you know, help you guys out. Um, regardless of who's watching this video, regardless of rank, if you are currently in or you're trying to join being a future soldier, um, just know that this video is not aiming towards, you know, bashing the army. It's just my personal opinion, which are facts that you can't Google online. So today's video is going to be pros and cons about the army. I'm going to start off with the pros let's go so pro number one would be free college before i joined the army um i did qualify for financial aid because my mother um uh, because we we are low income um i did qualify for financial aid so i didn't join the army for free school because going to school for me was already free now, so if you do join the army you will get excuse me you will get free college now when people hear that and they automatically want to join do not try to join the army thinking about free college and then you know, you, you mess up or you get kicked out and think you're still entitled to that. So, no. It all depends on how long you've been in and your type of discharge. Whether it be other than honorable, general, honorable. It all depends. There's a chart. I saw it in um, the legal office the other day. But, for example, if you've been in for two years, like me, for example. And say, tomorrow I go up to my commander and I slap the shit out of him. I'm going to get kicked out. I'm not going to get my benefits because... Um, because I got kicked out, it's not going to be honorably, and because I haven't hit that three-year mark. So, for you to get 100%, um, I'm sorry, you guys. It's just really weird for me to pay attention right now. But for you to get 100% on your um, GI Bill, which is like your school, the bill that pays for your school. Um, for you to get 100%, you have to be in for three years or longer, okay? That's... I believe that's 36 months or longer, or you have to get medically discharged, okay? So, me right now, if I get... If I fill my PT test or whatever, or I feel height and weight, or I feel whatever, whatever, and I get out honorably, you still will not get 100% unless you hit your three-year mark. So, do not let your recruiter lie to you. So, that is one um, that is one pro. You will get free school if you do what you're told and, you know. Who is it? Who is it? You don't want to say who it is. I'm opening the door. Okay, so the second pro would be the fact that you get free rent, basically, utilities and things like that. Um, you know, clothing on your back, whatever. So before I joined, of course, every pro that I pro and con that I say is going to relate to me in some way. So before I joined, you guys know, um, I lived with my mother back home, Brooklyn, New York, and I basically um the living conditions were really rough, I'm not gonna lie, and that is why I joined the army. I joined for a stable paycheck and a roof over my head where I wouldn't have to worry about people stealing from me, being sexually molested, anything, just anything like that. So that is actually why I joined. So um, for some of you guys that don't know, if you join the military and you are married or have a dependent, whether that be your kid or your mom, has to be somebody that depends on you, um, you will get BAH depending on what state you live in, is depending on how much the check will be, and that check goes to your rent. So if you are not married, you don't have kids like me, you will live in the barracks, which is what you guys see behind me. This is where I film all my videos. You guys know that this is where I live. Um, some barracks, you have to share a room with someone else. Some barracks, you get your own room. I am thankful to the Lord and thankful to Fort Campbell that I do have my own room. So me and my roommate share a kitchen and a bathroom. Um... The con about being in the barracks is, you know, room inspections, I would say, because, you know, you really don't want somebody invading your personal space. And, like, I mean, it's one thing to check if it's clean, and then it's another thing to check all in through your drawers and shit, like, you know. But yeah, so I'm a human being, and I, you know, deserve my privacy, whether that be, you never know. If you open my drawer, you don't know what's going to be in there. So I really don't like, I really don't like that aspect. And, um, the fact that shit can go missing. What else? Um... If you do live off post, of course, you don't get house inspections. They can do it, though, but you you probably won't honestly get it. So that is the good part. I do not pay rent. Um, out of my check, they take $300, and that is for food, and that is for me living in this room, which is not bad. It's actually pretty cheap, so that's a pro. Another pro um, 
for being in the military is you get paid vacation days. So in the army, you, well, I don't know if it's um, the whole military, but in the army, you get 2.5 leave days. What is this guy doing? Sorry, you guys. You get 2.5 leave days a month. If you save it up, if you're smart enough to save it up and not use them, then of course you can save up to a month, two months, three months after work. I think the most I've ever seen somebody save was like 70 days. And those 70 days are paid for. So if you go on vacation, you will still be getting paid. So that's a, that's a good pro. Pro number four which is one of my favorite pros, military discounts slash discounted flights, free flights. Um, so I know for a fact there is a program in the army. I don't know the name of it. If you Google it, it will be there where you can get like free flights, but there's like a con to it, but I don't know. I've never used it and I'm probably not gonna use it, but being in the military, you do get a lot of military discounts and a lot of retailers. Um, with airlines, you get free baggage up to a certain, like if you're on orders, like right now, if I pop up on orders to go to Korea, um, I can bring four 70 pound bags through the airline. So when my mom goes to Haiti, she has to pay her, her luggage cannot be over 50 pounds each and whatever it is over 50, she has to pay for it. So grateful for the opportunity that, you know, we ain't got to pay for that. So that Foot Locker, Champs, like almost everywhere has military discount. That is another pro. Um, another pro would be free healthcare. Now, yeah, yeah, it will be free healthcare, but the con about that is the doctors are military doctors. It's not this is not to bash any military doctors, but um if they mess up, you cannot sue them. So think about that before you join. If they mess up, you cannot sue the army. Um I have a friend, I'm not gonna say her name because of course that would be kind of you know grimy. She had a miscarriage. What is this? I'm sorry, you guys. Not a miscarriage. She gave birth to a child. The child passed away. Um, she had complications, and then they moved her to another hospital. When she woke up, she didn't know what happened, but they told her that she had to have a hysterectomy. So she had a hysterectomy, and um, she said she felt like she was told something, but they didn't show her any proof. They didn't show her any documentation, nothing. So she feels like some shady shit happened, but... Like in her situation, it's a whole, it's a big old situation with her, but in her situation, she can't sue. You understand what I'm saying? So you cannot sue the army healthcare. If they fuck some shit up, you are screwed. For some of you guys that don't know, I have veneers. Think I'm grateful, 100% grateful to the Lord that I got veneers. I also got my eyes fixed. I used to wear glasses. I used to wear thick ass glasses. Um, I got PRK and I also got my teeth fixed. I'm grateful that, that nothing bad happened because it, you know, they would have messed up or something, you can't sue. So that is kind of a pro and kind of a con because it is free healthcare. So whatever happens, you just got to take care of yourself and pray because child, child. Mm. Another pro of being in the military is training. You get a lot of training. You get a lot of certs. Whatever MOS you pick, I keep telling you guys this, the MOS you pick is really important. Do not let the name fool you. Okay. Like the, you know how the army has like big old names and for the MOS. Do not the name fool you. Make sure you pick a MOS that you really, really want to do every day and that you're gonna be proficient in because you don't wanna be like me. Me, I'm a 91 Charlie, which is basically like HVAC. Um my where I'm currently stationed, you know, in my unit, they don't really work HVAC. So I am in the oily room. So the people that are my MOS, they learn they learn about vehicles and stuff instead of what, you know, our primary MOS is. So when you go to AIT, of course, for my MOS, you, you graduate with some certs. So you get like me, for instance, I got type 1, type 2 for refrigerant. You know, things like that. So when I do get out, I would probably, you know, be able to get a job with HVAC. But me personally, I would not get an HVAC job because I don't feel like I'm as experienced as I need to be. So like I said, pick a job that you really, 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 really want to do because I have no interest in my job at all. So yeah um another pro of being in the military is traveling before i joined the army i think i've I, no i don't think i know i've been to haiti two times before i joined the army i've been to connecticut because of family but since i've joined i've been a lot of places even though i think kentucky slash tennessee is boring and it sucks i um this is still somewhere that i've never been before this is still somewhere where i can make memories and learning experiences so for instance since i've joined i've been to south carolina Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee. I've been I've been a lot of places that I would not have been if I did not have joined. So the next place you guys do know the next place I'm trying to get is Germany because I want to see the world. Like you know what I'm saying? I do plan on 
getting out of the army i don't plan on staying in long at all but i do want to at least travel so that is definitely a big ass and i say big ass i mean big ass pro okay now on to the cons like i said this is not a military bashing video so this is just me stating how i feel oh yeah shout out to my bib being andy jane for sending me this she sent me this i believe she was the yeah she was the put in africa and she sent me this shirt so i love you boo i love you i love you i love you she's goals i wish i looked like her i wish i had her rank i just i think she's absolutely beautiful and i think i have a crush on her honestly but um, i'm gonna leave her youtube on the screen somewhere because i need you guys to go support her she deserves more views than i do and she, for some reason like she's not getting as a lot of views and it's pissing me off because i know her quality is bomb like she takes she's basically vlogging and you know she like that while she's i think right now she's in italy or europe but y'all you need to go follow her but um one con which is probably one of the things that make me want to get out is rank slash abuse of rank slash abuse of power whatever you want to call it um rank you guys rank is not based on age i think it, i believe it matter of fact it's based on e5 and up is based on of course your experiences your schools um time and grade time and service things like that but there there are instances where the person that's that ranks more than you may be younger than you so a lot of people join the military they don't know that like hey, i ain't listening to no 25 year old i'm 30 i ain't listening to no it don't it don't matter if the person has more rank than you you look you have to listen to them um a lot of people you know that i know as e4 they get promoted to e5 and they change um e5 this is what I, this is how i feel i feel like your rank when you get out no one cares that you were uh master so no one no one cares you know what i'm saying we're all still human beings so a lot of people like to abuse their rank and this doesn't go for everyone in the military but a lot of people like to abuse their rank there are um you know there are programs set in place for things like that like sharp eo equal opportunity this there's, there's just a lot of shady stuff that go on and people like to abuse their rank because you know i'm a staff sergeant i'm a sergeant first class i don't have to you know what i'm saying so i don't really want to get into much details about that but you have to know that there are going to be people that are younger than you that are higher ranking than you and you have to do what they say now me for instance if someone tells me to do something i don't care what rank you are and i feel like it's against my morals i'm not going to do it so you just gonna have to kick me out because i'm not doing it if it's against my morals so so another con about the army is that you cannot quit if you join there's no waking up one day oh fuck it i don't want to do this shit no more um even if you feel that way because there are days you guys know there are days where i feel like that um it's not really the army in bad that it's not really the army in whole that's bad i'm not gonna lie the army itself is not bad it depends on where you're stationed who you're stationed with it's the people it's not the army you know what i'm saying there are bad seeds here and there but you cannot quit you can't wake up and just say fuck it i'm going home because your ass will be awol um yeah there's no quitting there's no quitting the army so you're gonna have to fail a pt test fail high fail multiple pt tests fail height and weight you have to do something extreme to get kicked out so or not have a family care plan that's a whole nother um that's a whole nother ball game i'm sorry you guys somebody just texted me but that is one of the cons you cannot quit so if you put your mind if you join just put your mind to it just do what i'm doing and just ride your contract out so another big ass con for me i'm not gonna lie is you can't i don't want to say like they babysit you but you i don't feel like an adult is basically what i'm saying you want to get married you gotta ask permission you want to um move out of the barracks i mean you don't really gotta ask permission to move out the barracks but like it's just a lot of babysitting like they want to know where you at what time with who what you doing this weekend who you doing this week what you doing like they just want to know your whole life this is what i'm saying like them like doing so many room inspections it's one thing for you to check like i said earlier it's one thing for you to check if my room is dirty but it's another thing if you're like you know babysitting so there's a lot of babysitting on me i'm not gonna lie especially if you, if you live in the barracks they try to tell you when when to do this when to eat when to shit when to sleep which is of course obvious because you're in the military but it doesn't go for everyone everyone doesn't get treated like that it's usually lower ranking so think for example like whoever is stationed in korea there's a curfew of what time you have to be in, on polls what time you have to be in your room just a lot of babysitting so as much as people may see on social media like oh my god i want to be in the army you were you got to realize that you ain't really got that much freedom like uncle sam got you like there's not that much freedom as you guys think 
And the last con would have to be being far away from family and or friends. So when you join, I mean, of course, you can make a list of where you want to go. But realistically, it's up to the Army's needs. The Army going to put you where they want to put you. Now, this may be 10 miles from your house. This may be 100 miles. This may be 1,000. This may be 100,000 miles. You never know where you're going to go. So that's one of the cons that you might be away from your family for a long time. Some people are not family-oriented, so they really don't care like me. I don't care. I mean, I do miss my mom, but other than that, I don't have to see anybody else. Like, peace out, sir and I, I don't care. Bye. <laughs> um... Um, my friends, now that's a little bit harder. I, I miss my best friend so much. Back home, she's in Brooklyn. I miss her so much. And I didn't... Why am I about to stop crying? I didn't realize how much I would miss her and my mom until I joined and got far away. I was like, damn, like, I really miss them. Like, they were literally my heart and soul. But, and it is tough to, like, to, to like, join the army and move away. And then you come back and people got kids. And people's kids, you, shit, he was the... Last time you seen him, he was a year old, and now next time he's like eight. You know what I mean? So it's it's hard because you join the army and you you move out and you move on with your life, and life back home continues. Like no one is waiting for you. Like life goes on. So you miss a lot of family moments and you know things like that. But I mean, I mean it ain't nothing to a G because I don't care about family anyway, except for my mama. So uh, yeah, that is it for my pros and cons video. If you guys are, if any of you guys are in the military and you feel like you want to add some pros and cons, please comment down below. Let these future soldiers know what's really going on with the dealio. So I love you guys so much, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.